Okay, question number two from S1, June 2017, International A level. Um, the box plot shows the times T. It takes a group of office workers to travel to work. Find the range of the times. Well, the box plot is pretty simple stuff here. We've basically everything shown visually. We see the lowest and the highest values. Um, so the range is the difference between the highest value, which you can see here, is over here. And if you look at the scale, every one space here is one, so it's at 61. So the range is going to be 61 from the highest value minus the lowest value, which is going to be here, which is exactly at 20. So the range of the times is 41, 61 minus 20. The interquartile range is basically the difference between the upper and the lower quartiles. Now, the box here shows us about the quartile. So the lower quartile is the, the, the lower end of the box. That's Q1. It's called Q1. Okay, the upper quartile is the other end of the box, which is Q3. Okay, those are the two we need to answer this question, but you also here have the median, which is Q2. So we can see here from, from here, Q1 is actually exactly 25. Q1 is 25. Let me write that properly. Q3 is 32, 31, 32. Okay, Q3 is 32. And Q2 is, sorry, not 32. What am I talking about? That's 37. That's 37 here. Pen doesn't seem to want to work. Okay, so Q3 is 37, sorry. One pen. One second, sorry about this. Okay, so Q3 is 37. And we can see Q2. It's 31, that's 31 here. Yeah. All right. So the interquartile range is basically 37 minus 25. 37 minus 25, which gives you 12. Okay, that's the interquartile range, 12. A little bit neater. All right. Oh, God, this thing is annoying. I need to fix this pen equals 12 okay so now we have our interquartile range now the next part of the question is asking us to describe the skewness of the data okay so it's using the quartiles to describe the skewness of the data okay so let's just move this up here so we can see what's going on there we've got some space okay so using the quartiles describe the skewness of the data so what we can see is the position of the median in relation to the lower quartile and the upper quartile helps us to determine the skewness of the data. If the median is closer to Q1, then it has positive skew. If the median is closer to Q3, then it has negative skew. So the closer, it, if it's in the middle, then there's no skew. And you can see here, okay, that it looks like it's symmetrical because it looks right in the middle. And we can justify that using... Um, the quartile. So let's look at the difference. Let's look at how far Q2 is from Q1. So Q2 minus Q1. Q2 minus Q1 is equal to 30 is equal to 31 minus 25. 31 minus 25, which is 6. And we can say that Q3 minus Q2, that's how far the median is from Q. Q, Q3 minus Q2 is going to give us 37 minus 31. 37 minus 31, which is also 6. So we can say that we can say that there's no skew, symmetrical, no skew. Okay, no skew. And the reason we can say there's no skew is because Q2 minus Q1 is the same as Q3 minus Q2. They have the same value, symmetrical. Okay, that's perfectly fine for your answer for this part C. Okay, so we use quartiles to describe the skewness of the data. Then it says, Chetna believes the house prices will be higher if the time to travel to work is shorter. She asked a random sample um, of these office workers for their house prices in 
pounds, which is x, where x is measured in thousands, and she obtains the following statistics. So t obviously is the time to travel to work, and x is the um, house price. So we got to find the PMCC coefficient between x and t. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the formula sheet, which is over here. Okay, and the PMCC is given by this R, which is S X Y over the square root of S X X over X S Y Y. Now your X and your T, your, your X and Y mean are different things in our particular example. In this case, our the the Y is the T. Okay, so the Y in the formula is our T. Okay, so what we can do here is we can just put everything in the right place so we have basically this is going to be a t here and this is going to be a t and a t okay so sxt is 10 divided by the square root of 5514 multiplied by 1145.6 and that should give us the value of R. So we have 10 over the square root of 5514 times 1145.6.6. And that gives us the value of R, which is really small. 5514 times 1145.6. Okay, so that's going to give us a value of R which is 0 0.0039 okay now that's a really low value of R so we can 0 0.0039 is a really really low value of R okay so that basically shows that there's absolutely no cor cor correlation between those two quantities okay so Chetna was completely wrong in her analysis of the situation Okay, so give it, giving a, a reason, um, state giving a reason whether or not your correlation coefficient supports Chetna's belief, and you can say it does not support at all. It does not support her belief. Okay. Okay, it doesn't support it. Sorry about my pen, it's really lagging today. Her belief and the reason being is because the value of R is very close to zero. Okay. As there is no correl correlation, there, there is there is no correlation. Sorry about this. Co correlation this pen is really playing up as there's no correlation as r is close to zero as r is basically almost zero it's approximately zero 0 0.0039 is very close to zero okay so it does not support her belief as there's no correlation as r is close to zero okay that's part e um and now part f Okay, it says Adam and Betty are part of the group of office workers and they have both moved house. Adam's time to travel to work changes from 32 to 36 minutes. Betty's time to change work tra changes from 38 to 58 minutes. Outliers are defined as values of 1.5 times interquartile range above the upper quartile. Showing all necessary calculations determine how the box plot of times to travel to work will change and draw a new box plot on the grid on page 5. Okay, so I have actually have bought both the grids here. So that's the grid from before and this is the new grid. We have to draw the new box plot on. Now, if you remember, our value for the median, Q3, Q2, sorry, was 31. Okay, and if you look at Adam's time to work it changes from 32 to 38 so it, it was to the right of the median and it stays to the right of the median so it doesn't change the position of the median and Betty's time changes from 38 to 58 so again okay it was over here somewhere 
All right, and it's to the right of the median, and it goes even further to the right of the median. So the median will stay exactly as it is. Okay, so the median won't change at all. So the median will still be exactly in the same place, which is going to be at 31. So like, let's just draw that. The median won't change. Okay. The median will stay exactly as it is. All right. And then it says, um, all right. So the upper lower quartiles will also stay as they are. Okay. The upper and lower quartiles will also stay as they are. Um, so that will be exactly as it was before. And that will be exactly as it was before. So the box will look exactly as it, is, as it was before these two changes. Okay. Now. Okay, so what will change here on the upper quartile side? Well, her, 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 change her time change from 38 to 58 so let's try and figure out if that's going to be an outlier so let's see the outlier is this is 1.5 multiplied by the interquartile range which is 12 okay the interquartile range which is 12 okay that's the interquartile range you work that out so 1.5 times 12 is going to be 12 plus 6 which is 18 okay so therefore the outlier is going to be um the Q3, which is 37, 37 plus 18, which is going to be 55. Okay, so anything greater than 55 is it called an outlier. Greater than 55 would be an outlier. So her time of 58 is outside. Okay, so 58, is, this has now become an outlier. So 58 is an outlier, so you're going to have to write... 50, that's 56, 7, 8. So we're going to put a, another asterisk here. We also we already have the asterisk from before. So now there's two asterisks. This has now become an outlier. And this these whiskers will stay exactly as they are. That's the highest or the lowest value within the range. And that's the lowest value altogether. Nothing has changed on this side. Okay, so there we have. Let me straighten that up. There we have the new diagram. So... In terms of the, the box and the whiskers, nothing's changed at all. The only change has been um, the fact that there's one more outlier. Okay, the interquartile range stayed the same, the median stayed the same. Now, if one of the values changed from being below the median to above the median, okay, it will push the median to the left. But as they both started between, um, above the median and they went further above the median, the median won't change, it will stay, stay in the same position because these just moved on this side. But if something shifts from there to there, okay, it causes the median to shift this way actually, because there will be more items on this side of it. Okay, So that's why uh, the median stays the same. Okay, And uh, that's basically the answer to this question.